I just want to congratulate you on this film because Thank you. honestly, I loved it. It's just oh, my great. kind of movie and great. it moved me beyond like honestly I was crying mm -hmm. my head off. That's, that's the idea. Fabulous. So I wanted to ask you, you get the script and you're reading through it and you're like, what ultimately touched you to make it into a movie? Well, when I first picked up and read it, I thought there were certain elements. You don't look for the finished article, you're looking for what can you do with this. Yeah. And there were certain elements in it that I thought I could really play with and, and make uh, into what I thought would be a pretty useful movie in the end. Um, it was uh, about something for a start, so on one level it's not just a bit of fluff. So it's about, it had recognisable humans that you could be sitting next to on the bus Absolutely. or the tram and you know, that I was interested in doing a film about, not superheroes, not, you know, anybody in extraordinary circumstances, just the um, beauty of the everyday. Uh, it had a lot of music in it, which was unspecified, and I thought, well, I can do something with that because I'm really into music, and I thought, I, I really believed in the, the idea of the transcendental nature of music, music anyway. I think it's, it's a big thing in my life, and I thought I can understand how that would mean something to someone, and that, again, is translatable to anybody. Sure. Um, but I thought that it was the connection between the, uh, the relationships between the three leading women. Um, the, the each, each woman had a diff they occupied a different color in the, spec the emotional spectrum. And I thought that's more reflective of, uh, of people I know, yes. of women I know. Um, and that you're not kind of talking down to them. And they're not there because they're women and they're right on. They're just normal people going through stuff. So I felt it was a combination of all those things that made me want to get involved with it in the first place. And then, you know, let's just go right to the casting. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll start with Shirley because, you know, people know her from uh, train spotting. Hello, yeah. like, yeah. oh my goodness, she's, yeah. you know, th how many years ago was that? Yeah. And I'm sure she still gets stuck with that film. But, wow, what an amazing job she did. How did you know she was going to be able to pull this one off? Um, well, you mentioned train spotting. She was actually made her debut, her film debut in Rob Roy. Yes. Uh, so I had known her since then. I thought she was a great actress then. And I, I'd followed her career since then. You know, with any film, whether it's big or small, the producers always want you to cast a movie star. But if you're working at the budget level we're working at, you can't afford a movie star. So you go through this ridiculous thing where you offer it to a movie star and they turn it down and then you go to the next one. So you went through half a dozen of them knowing that you were going to get turned down yeah. until you get to the level of actors that you could afford and that you wanted. And she was at the top of that list for me because of the different things that she, that, the kind of emotional honesty that she could bring to it. And to me that, was, that, that gives it, it's kind of touchstone. Like I've done a couple of films with Robert De Niro and as soon as you cast him, that sets off everybody else. This is a, this is the level you guys have got to be working to. I love how you say that. I've done a couple of films with Robert De Niro. Hey, you know. Oh, he's done a couple of films with me. Exactly. That's <laughs> how you have to say yeah. it. <laughs> you know, I've been very lucky. Well, yeah, no, you have. But, but again, you, so, so you, you, you kind of look at the, the casting process as a bit like a tapestry. There's a big picture that you've got to keep in, in mind. But you're looking again at different colours that you can put in that are going to, you know, uh, give you a different feeling when you look at them. So you you have to start with someone, and and with Shirley, I was really happy uh, because of that again that emotional honesty and that kind of straightforwardness that she brings to it. Uh, and I just think she's a rock in the film. Yeah, she is. So then when you go to the casting of the other two girls who, who you know, you don't want them to be the same. Mm -hmm. You don't want them to be the same as each other, and you don't want them to be that. They want to occupy a different space. Uh, and I tried to, I, I, Letitia was one of the first people I'd met, and she actually came in to read for Leanne. And she really? read for, yes. Oh, okay. And I thought, wow, you're good, I'll have you. So that's one done, okay. And I, and I kept reading loads of different actresses for uh, the part of Jamie. And I looked, they were very good, a lot of them, but they didn't... Some were good at singing, some were good at acting, some were sympathetic, some were hard, but none of them... Uh, you have to show someone who can go from being uh, ostracised and, and burnt and hurt to someone who can break down and arrive at a different place. So no, nobody was really doing all that until I got a, a self-tape from Australia. This girl had made a tape of herself with playing Leanne and sent it in, and it was Isabella. And I thought, wow, you're pretty good. Oh, it's pity I've got someone. She was fabulous. And I went, oh, wait a minute. I can't what, what, what if I moved in there? So I got Letitia back in, and I read her for the, that part, and she was really good. And I thought, OK, well, now if I can get these two together. so. 
I put them together and they hit it off straight away and I thought, okay, we're done. There you go. Yeah. So yeah. my job here is done. Yeah. I, can, I can now go to sleep. Yeah, they're, they're both fabulous. I yeah. mean, Letitia, yeah, you know, your heart goes, well, your heart goes out to both girls. Yes. I mean, there's no question. Well, that's the point. Is, is you're, yeah. not, you're not saying this, this person's all bad and this person's all good because that's not the way life is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's a situation that they're in and, and one's defensive but the other one wants to... Well, you understand. To me, it's important to try and get the dynamics of a relationship. Uh, it was not my job. I, I really made a conscious decision. It was not my job to comment on whether it was right or wrong what they were doing. Okay. It was simply to present what they did and let the audience do the work about, oh, she's wrong, oh, she's, oh, no, what's going to do? Yeah. That way you get the audience empathizing with the situations and they hope and they, they pray and that's how you get them into a film. Yeah, you know? exactly, exactly. What uh, kind of surprised you about Letitia? I mean, she's just so great. I didn't know she was so good. <laughs> I thought she was good, but I didn't know she was that good. Um, she's got a very natural ability. She's not overtrained. She hadn't gone to a drama school and stage and uh, theatre and all that, which a lot of actors in Britain have done. So she was kind of raw, but she had a, a natural uh, behaviour. And, and most importantly, uh, uh, an emotional honesty. It's very hard sometimes to, to be emotional honest, emotionally honest because we all put up enough barriers in front of ourselves to protect ourselves. But she, uh, all the best actors that I've worked with have that ability to forget what they look like and just inhabit that character at that moment in time. And I just thought, wow, you're really good at that, love. But she also was desperately keen to learn. She was desperately keen to, to better herself. And when you're faced with some that kind of enthusiasm and that kind of raw talent, it, it's beholden on you to try and take her and help her and, and point, no, don't do that, do that, do that, you know. And she responded and she just by the day she was getting better. And it's just, it's just brilliant to watch. Yeah, she was great. And she had a lovely voice too. You know, she surprised herself. Yeah. Her, her she worked very hard on it. I'm sure she did. Yeah, yeah. we're talking about it and her song at the end is just yeah. moving yeah. on words. Yeah, you know? I think so. Um, I have to ask you, you know, one of the things that really stood out for me, of course, is a mentor, somebody who has made a difference in your life, yeah. somebody who can make a difference. You made a difference in your life. Did you have a teacher like that, or somebody who believed in you? And um, I, so many. Uh, when I, you know, all my life I've been lucky uh, that there's not any one person in particular. Uh, it's just I come from Scotland, and it was. I grew up in an environment where if you do well, it's incumbent on you to help others. It's really simple. We we elevate everybody if we do that, and I, I really believe that, you know, I can't make them movie stars. All I can do is say, this is what happened to me. If you do this, this might work for you. And then give them a seed and let that seed grow or not grow. In my life, I've had so many people give me advice and give me help. And in, in my professional life, I've had, I came in at the end of a sort of old school way of training in British film. And some of the technicians and cameramen and what have you, they taught me so much. And it's kind of gotten forgotten now as the industry's broken down and anybody with a camera can run about making a film. What's happened is that the old style classical movie making is kind of is kind of going, and then unless we pass it on to the next generation, it's going to go completely. Yeah. This happened between silent film and, and film after that. So I just feel as though it's my role to keep putting it out as well, um, and hopefully, if they become movie stars, they can hire me. You know. <laughs> Sure, you're going to be the first person that they're going to call. Oh, Letitia, man. I have both of them. They're both girls. I'm yeah, so, like, really really well, I think, you know, it's, this is actually, apart from whatever the, anybody thinks of the film, I believe you're watching the birth of a couple of stars. I agree. I agree. And you always yeah. feel that when I, especially with me, I've been doing this festival yeah. for a long time, but you know, I can always take I don't know what it actors. is, but you can see it. Listen, I was one of the first person to ever interview Eddie Redmayne here in Toronto, you know, and, and same with like, you look back at Abby Cornish and Sam yeah. Wellington, and back then they yeah. were like, who the hell yeah. do you want to yeah, talk exactly. to them? And I was like, are you kidding me? Bring, exactly. bring them on. And, exactly. and this is what's going to be with these yeah. girls. There's yeah. no question. So you look back at your phenomenal career and the great yeah. movies that you've given us. What was the movie that like pretty well just changed your life? Uh, I think uh, Shooting Dogs. Uh, it was a life-changing experience. Not necessarily, forget the film, it was being in Rwanda for six months, uh, living and working there. It was mind-blowing. It was mind-blowing. The only 
thing I regret about that film is that I couldn't show the Rwanda that I found. Uh, I had to make a film about the, the uh, genocide, uh, so I had to be sort of disciplined about that. But I found the most wonderful people and the most wonderful place. And uh, I felt after that, I just uh, that's the kind of film I wanted to make. Uh, I didn't get to make that kind of film again for a long time, but uh, it, w it really just changed the way that I saw things. It's yeah. that you don't need money, you don't, you just need ideas, and it's much more satisfying to make something that's worthwhile, even if it's harder to make. Yeah, I can just imagine. Yeah. So, what to you makes a good story then? Um, something that creates empathy in an audience, really simply. Um, if you get an audience going, oh, what are they going to do? Oh, I wouldn't have done that. You know, then you're actually hooking an audience in. If you, if they care about the choices that a character is making on screen, then they are involving themselves in the picture. It's not enough to make some something that looks just beautiful or something that just has a load of action without any kind of weight behind it. it there's something missing. It's like, you know, uh, it's like a, uh, it's like a meal that isn't very. Good, <laughs> you know, and it's covered in cheese and <laughs> what have you. You know, you, there's different ways of eating. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. There is, isn't there? So for me, I, I, you know, again, as you get older, you 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 see more complexity in human nature, and you kind of want to reflect that complexity in, in a way, just to reflect the worldview that you have somehow or other. Yeah. Have you shown this film yet to you know? No one has seen this, so this film. Is, this is the first. Hour we the were so poor we couldn't afford to yeah. test. It. Yeah. So we've only shown it to the crew. <laughs> no, I mean it's wonderful, and I, I like I say, I, I, you know, for me, I hope that you show it to, to teens that are in trouble. And yes, you know, absolutely, and, that's the intention. Yeah. Once we get it, get it going, um, I, I, at the cast and crew, some people brought their, their kids with them, and the response from them was it actually surprised me because I thought, oh, okay, this is old folks, and you know, it's a grown-up storyline. But the kids said, no, no way. This is about what it's like to have a best friend who's leading you. Astray, yeah. and, and that dynamic is actually it was much stronger than I thought. And the dilemma and, that yeah. you and then, because that's what we're, you know, I, I, yeah, I've got to stick by my mate, and I, I really want to be good. I really, you know, yeah. and that's what I mean about the empathy. You, you're making these choices, and again, it wasn't my job to say this is right and this is wrong. She shouldn't be doing this, and she should be doing that. Just present it, and but the only and I learned this from shooting dogs as well. It yeah. wasn't you, you present the situation, and if you present it in an honest way, the audience will want to know what happens, and they'll want to get involved. In it. And absolutely. that to me is what you're after in the cinema. Well, absolutely. Well, like I say, you've done a really great job. Thank you movie. very much. Just keep bringing us more to the film. Well, I just, here. this one. Now that you've got this Canadian connection that I just found out about, yes. you just have to bring them all here. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, 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 the reason I'm, I'm really happy to be in Toronto because you do two things in Toronto at the festival. One is you sort of start the journey for Oscars yes. with big films. That's for sure. But we don't have the money and anything that they've got. But what they also do here is they discover films that people, and, and I'm hopeful that's going to happen with this because we could use the help for people, you know, we, this has been dragged screaming into existence for, uh, in spite of people who said, you can't be done, you won't do it for the money, you'll never get that. And all of a sudden it's done and people are looking at it going, oh, that's pretty good. And we go, yeah, oh, thank you, I hope so. And so. I want to stick it to those guys who said, you won't do this. Good, well, you keep going. I'm going to start talking, talking it up. Please that's for do. Sure. I really appreciate it. And thank you. It's so lovely to thank talk you. to you. Thank you. You too. Thank you so much.